So I know I'm about a day late on this, but better late than never. And honestly, this is the gift that keeps on giving, as there is no shortage of continued talk about Tony Khan taking the pile driver from the Young Bucks, the TK driver, as it's called now, the former Melter driver, wearing the net the the neck brace gimmick on the NFL draft. Oh boy! First, let's uh, let's take a look at Tony Khan at the NFL draft, just to kind of set this whole thing up here, and then we'll get into some thoughts about it. <laughs> All right, Tony, we're gonna think, we're, hold on, real quick, real quick. What's the prognosis? What are the doctors yes. telling you? Well, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, I think you're going to have to tune in to AEW to find out what, <laughs> uh, what they have to say. There we Silly go. Me. You find out on TNT and TBS what my prognosis is and what's going to happen to I, me. I'll tell you what. Save all that stuff. Just tell us who you're taking tonight. We'll take that yes. here. How about that? So props to Tony Khan for not breaking kayfabe. At the very least, can we give him that, right? Like, he did the angle. He's selling the angle on national TV. Still wearing the neck brace. Keeping kayfabe, brother, brother, after taking the Meltzer driver from the Young Bucks, now called the TK driver. Good for him. A lot of people are giving him props for putting over the angle and keeping kayfabe and, and really sticking to the story and being committed and all that good for him i guess but the problem here is that the nfl draft is kind of a big deal guys like i'm not a sports ball guy but a lot of people watch and or pay attention to the nfl draft tony khan is out there representing a professional football team a team that would probably like to be taken seriously by the greater professional football media and sports fans and such. And he's out there, this fucking goof, in a neck brace. In a fucking neck brace. Like he's Vince McMahon at the goddamn steroid trial or something. Or like uh, Eric Bischoff pointed out in this clip that we're going to play, like he's Andy Kaufman or something. It's preposterous. It's just preposterous. It's not bad enough that his dad's out there with that preposterous mustache that he's rocking. Tony Khan's got to come out there with a fucking neck brace. And they're doing the draft as serious as a heart attack. But Tony's not taking this seriously. He's taking it. He's playing fucking wrestling is what he's doing. That's what everybody sees. People don't believe it like they believed it back in the day. Everybody knows wrestling's a work. Nobody believes this, especially because Tony can't keep from smiling the whole fucking time. He's got I'm a big fucking clown written all over his face as he's doing these interviews. Nobody takes him seriously. They're playing along. Oh, you got hurt. I see. Uh Uh-huh. Cool. Meanwhile, the Jacksonville Jaguars are like, can we have some fucking credibility, please? I know I got AEW fans that listen, and I know you guys are, you unfollow and uh, thumbs down and all that shit every time I bag on AEW, but go back a year or two. I was a strong supporter of AEW. I want them to succeed. That's why I bag on them so hard. But this is a clown show. 680,000 views was what they got. Right? They popped a rating with the CM Punk thing, and everybody goes, ooh, they popped a rating. It didn't even fucking hit 900,000. Now they can't even get to 700,000? Coming out of a hot pay per view, by the way, where Jack Perry returned. What's going to happen with Jack Perry? Tune in to Dynamite to find out. No one cares. We got a brand new world heavyweight champion, Swerve Strickland, first black AEW champion ever. No one cares. You know why no one cares? Because AEW doesn't put any proper anything into anybody. Greatest wrestling match of all. Look, the pay-per-view dynasty was a banger. I actually recorded some shorts uh, about how AEW looks like they could be on the uptick after Dynamite, or after, I'm sorry, after Dynasty. Then they did the stupid angle with Tony Khan. And now he's out on the NFL draft wearing a neck brace. Like, oh my God, 
We're supposed to take this guy seriously? No one takes it seriously. The AEW diehards will look at it and try to defend it by saying, oh, he's keeping kayfabe. He's selling the angle. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is it's embarrassing when you go out in public and try to you're you're representing a national football team wearing a fucking neck brace selling a fucking wrestling angle from a show that couldn't draw 700,000 people or sell out in Daly's place. What's it hold? 3,000? They couldn't even do that. I don't care if you're mad at me for banging on AEW could they do something right for once. They did good by Strickland, but then they fucking ruined it by burying him on dynamite. Oh, let's not have a fucking championship celebration. Let's not give him ample promo time. Oh, let's put him out in a match with some fucking no name. Nobody who cares and segment, whatever the fuck that nobody's even watching. People go, Oh, he's our world champion in seg two seg three. Wrestling who? Some world champion you got there. Will Ospreay, Brian Danielson, greatest wrestling match of all time ever. Okay. You can tell that story. What's next? Will Ospreay struggling in a fucking multi-man match against who? I don't know, man. I don't know. I just don't fucking know. It's embarrassing. I'm not the only one who thought this. Uh, Lots of people have, obviously. Here's a clip of Eric Bischoff not holding back, giving his thoughts on old Tony Khan, as he always does, doesn't he? I mean, look at there. Jaguars Tony Khan takes punch, comma, pile driver on AEW Dynamite show. I don't think the NFL.com has ever ran a story with the word pile driver ever before. Like, I appreciate that they're trying something, Eric. I'm I'm here for it. I say let it play oh out. Oh, my God. Oh. Come on. No, I'm not going to come on. This isn't me hating. This is just me being real. And I think, yeah, they tried something, and it was fucking horrible. In a f- Eric, you said I think it's – look, it was embarrassing. It was flat-out embarrassing. Great. You're getting some headlines going into the NFL draft. I am a media whore. I will fucking run down the street naked, painted purple if I thought it would get me the right amount of media and and help me achieve my goal. I get it. I'm not above it. But this was embarrassing. It was the fucking execution on the show itself was embarrassingly bad. And if this angle and Tony showing up at something that's supposed to be as serious as the NFL NFL draft with a fucking neck brace on, like Andy Kaufman, It's been done to death. It's fucking stupid. Nobody's believing it. You just look like a clown for doing it. But hey, you'll get, you know, get some headlines. I'm sure it'll be about as effective as when you made David Arquette the world champion. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about. You got to get your boy in check. And I'm not talking about Eric Bischoff. Your boy, Tony Khan. AW fans, AW diehards. Look, here's the deal. The wrestling is phenomenal in AEW. There's nobody on the planet that can hold a candle to the wrestling that happens bell to bell in an AEW ring. That's a fact. WWE fans, fuck off. You're wrong. I don't care who AG Styles, Seth Rollins. No. Bell to bell, AEW's got it on lock, and they tout that. We're the best wrestle. And that's what the fans hang on to. Look, we love our wrestling match, and I've seen the memes out there. Oh, stop having fun, AEW fans, you know, Uh, because they're enjoying the product that everybody else is bitching about. Here's the thing. There's fewer and fewer of you as the weeks and months go on. And we would like that this company has some sort of success so that there can be some semblance of competition in the wrestling business where guys can compete, where guys can go back and forth and earn big money contracts and be on national TV at the very least. Be a Pepsi. Don't be a fucking fago. No offense to fago. I'm sure there's a lot of diehard juggalos just getting at me in the comments about their precious fago. But it's it's not Coke to Pepsi anymore. It's Coke to Fago. Fago Cola at that. 
I don't know, man. Get your boy in check. This is a Tony Khan problem. Now, I mean, you, you've heard of the old adage, jump the shark, right? So the It's from the Happy Days episode. I'm sure you've heard of it. There was a Happy Days episode, an old sitcom back in the day that was a hit show until there was an episode where Fonzie literally was out fucking water skiing or something in his leather jacket on the water and he takes a big jump and he jumps over a big nasty like jaws shark he literally jumps a shark and it was so preposterous that the the viewing audience was like okay i think this show has seen its better days and that was it and that's why they call it jumping the shark tony khan Look, I thought airing footage of CM Punk to pop a rating, which Tony Khan bragged about, by the way. Oh, the network. I got the good news from the network. They're so happy with the numbers. Whose number? CM Punk's number? Where does he work? What's his next match going to be, huh? I'll over on with Drew McIntyre on Raw. Okay. Well, that was fun for a week then, wasn't it? Did that rating hold? Did you keep those viewers? No. So now what? Now we got to jump the another shark, right? I thought that was jumping the shark. This is jumping the shark. Tony Khan getting the... And look, people are comparing it to uh, fucking Kevin Nash powerbombing Eric Bischoff through the tail. Oh, it's been done before. Stone Cold stunnering Vince. No. No, this is different. That was when wrestling was at its peak and that boosted those companies into the Attitude Era, into the NWO Era, right? This, what's this going to do? Are we, is Tony Khan a character now? Or, 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 even if he's not going to be on TV, are we suddenly like, is this so much heat for the Young Bucks and Jungle Boy? Oh my God, we got to see, are they the new Bullet Club, the new NWO? Or are they that fucking, oh, these dastardly heels I must watch to see what they do? Is they're, they're just lawless. They're beating up Tony Khan even. No, it feels desperate. It feels like Tony did this to fucking probably live out his dream. And look, man, hey, I've taken plenty of bumps in a wrestling ring. I am not a wrestler. And every single one of them was a lifelong dream. So I am not knocking the hustle of Tony Khan taking a bump in a wrestling ring. Problem is... It's jumping the shark, man. You're doing it to pop a rating. You're do it. You're desperate. It reeks of desperation. What can we pull out now? Tony needs to stay off of TV. Not even once. I mean, I, it just it's not working. Nobody cares about Young Bucks and the Jungle Boy. It's not shocking. That's the problem. If this was like. Drew McIntyre didn't re-sign with WWE, right? And he went over to AEW, and Tony Khan was out there to welcome his newest signee, and then Drew gives him a fucking glass cow kiss. Pa! Holy shit! Why? I don't know. It doesn't matter, but we'll tune in next week, and we'll find out. Because he's not here, because he, he's coming, because he sees Tony Khan as a fucking ATM, and he's here to wreck everybody's shop, all these little fucking... People who think they're wrestlers. I'm a big, tough wrestler. I'll beat all your guys' asses. I'm here to take over. Something like that, you know. Uh, then it could be believable. Then we're like, oh, holy shit. This guy took out the fucking... But when it's the Young Bucks, it's the EVPs. Nobody, The Young Bucks are barely believable as it is. Nobody believes the Young Bucks as tough guys. Think about it. Every single one of you watching would go, yeah, I'd probably kick the Young Bucks' asses. They're small. They're small. They're kind of whiny little pussy boys. They're, nobody ever looks at the, them as, ooh, those are big tough guys. Better not piss off the young bucks. They don't have that credibility to begin with. So when they come out and they try to be like this dangerous, edgy threat that, oh, we're going to take out the bot, like, everybody's like, eh. Plus they know you guys like your EVPs. You're part of the company. It's all, it's all a show. It's all fake. And then Tony's out there barely holding on a smile in fucking NFL draft. Uh, he can barely hold it together. He's so giddy that he gets to fucking live out this little angle and stuff, you know? And for anybody saying, oh, it was a one-off that Tony was on TV, well, he's kind of making a spectacle of himself doing media with a neck brace. Is he not? Is he not? 
Look, nobody's going to fault Tony Khan for not wearing a neck brace at the NFL draft. Where are people going to bury him for not keeping kayfabe, brother, brother? They're going to go, no. It's the NFL draft. I expect him to take it seriously. Duh. It's a show. I don't know. I'm kind of ranting here, and I'm probably pissing off every last one of my AEW fans, but I swear to God I'm doing it with love. There's things I like in AEW. I enjoy banger matches. I love me some Will Ospreay. He's my favorite wrestler. I am in strong support of Swerve Strickland's run. I've said that I think they need to build the company around these two. I just think, God, I hate the Young Bucks, and it's not the not the good kind of hate. It's the fuck a Young Bucks angle. And the ratings reflect that because they do not. The, the ratings always drop when they're on TV. Nobody cares. I don't know, man. There's more to this, but uh, it, I was kind of debating how to do this because uh, Bischoff uh, further got into it with Dax over Tony, taking a shot at Tony Khan or AEW. But I'm, I think I'm going to spin that off into its own separate video. Uh, I feel bad for you guys. I feel bad for you AEW fans. And look, God bless the AEW fans that are like, we love every single thing that they do still. You guys are just being haters. God bless you, and you're right. Who am I to tell you what to, to like, what not to like? That's not my job. But we can all kind of notice that AEW is dying a slow, painful death. And some of us would rather see them stick around and have some success. And hopefully they do. Hopefully they can turn it around. But we all know the problem is Tony Khan, and it's not going to change until Tony Khan gets the fuck out of there. Problem is he owns the company. Problem is he didn't start the company to be a profitable business. He started the company so he had something to play with and live out his fantasies. Fine if that's what he wants to do, but he's playing with a national TV company. And doing it the way he's been doing it is just killing off the fans. He's... Damn near, he's down to half the fucking viewership he had on the debut episode of Dynamite. They have barely ever been able to touch over a million audience. And now they're fucking a good number, popping the numbers and hitting 900,000 with CM Punk. Or in the 800, high 800,000s with a CM Punk who works for another company. It's, it's, it's bad, guys. But I'll leave it there. Peace, love, and pizza. I'm going to go ahead. And move on to the next. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.